Um, actual physical construction on the site should be completed by the end of about this July. About the end of July. Actual move in for the space will probably be the end of September. Because we have to put all the racking in, humidification system. It's going to have a state-of-the-art fire control and suppression system. Um, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, there's a lot of rooms that aren't in here, so it's still kind of an empty shell. Obviously, there's bathrooms and elevators, and we're putting in those wheels of fortune like you saw for the, prop, the prepping of the tobacco. We're putting a caldera in. In the back, along on the top floor, that's where uh, all the sorters are going to go up on the top floor. And then behind there, we're building a conference room and a tobacco laboratory on the back of that. So we have a designated place to do all our tobacco analysis. And you know what I was saying to you today about being an expert in the northern light? That's why if you look at the size of the windows on that side, that's where primarily we'll use to uh, grade and analyze tobaccos, because that's on the north side of the building. How many square feet again, Steve? Uh, this building is a little over 7,000 square feet. Yeah, it's a sizable building. Um, this is this is what it's going to be. is very simple. It's going to be basically for this main section that we put the storing of tobacco. Now temporarily, we're talking about this. up here in the front. You have offices, and then we have another meeting room that's going up on this uh, upper deck here. But we're talking about temporarily. Set, given the current tobacco planogram, will actually be 100% at capacity by the summer of 2015. So we, we literally will outgrow this building within almost a year of it being completed. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that we have a hard time wrapping our brains around. But every time we do the math, that's what it comes up with. In the short term, though, I won't need. I will only fill this tobacco storage area approximately three-fifths full. Um, so what we're talking about is potentially, because we have such a problem with packaging, is about breaking the building and putting a firewall here and using this front section here to just temporarily store packaging materials because I have to build a new packaging bodega. And that was one of the things I had to meet with the architect yesterday to go over, was to look at the preliminary plans for that. But uh, the initial plans, I didn't really like how much it was gonna cost, so it's gonna require a little bit more analysis before I'm ready to pull the trigger on that. I mean, I mean building in Nicaragua has gotten to be quite costly at this point. I mean, you're looking at, you know, this whole facility from beginning to end is about $3.7 million to build a rectangle. You know, so it's uh, it's very significant. And as you notice, I mean, a lot of money went into the foundation work because you notice how physically much higher you're sitting here than every place else. Because, I mean, we're in such a flood-prone country with the rainy season. We obviously, you're always worried about water, you're always worried about fire. You know, and whenever you have fire, you never have enough water. When you have enough water, you never have enough heat. So, but, so the building, this is pretty much, I mean, this is sitting at an elevation that's almost a good, eight foot higher than the rest of the property with the intent of being protective of the leaf. So all of this will be racked with just bales of tobacco. And then up underneath this deck, and again, the rebar is right here in the middle, so don't trip on that. I'm surprised how cool it is in here. I expect it to be warmer. I don't know why. It's really big, really but actually, we the side hall just to get put in the cages for the Texas coolers, because in addition to having a state-of-the-art fire control and suppression system, communication system, we're also going to have an air handling system, okay, so that we can try to maintain the desired ventilation through the facility in an automated fashion. You know, I've been to a lot of pre-industries, and this will definitely be the most state-of-the-art pre-industry upon its completion. Will someone build a bigger, better? You know how that works. Someone always builds a taller building. But for the moment, as is, this will by, be by far the most modern facility 
for the handling and the storing and the sorting and the fermenting of air-cured black tobaccos on the planet. elevators and all of that moves back up and down. There's also going to be a firewall here. This will not be left open. And the reason why is because we're going to want the women to be able to continue doing the sorting when we do the fumigation every month. So this space that you're in now has to be in an encapsulated sealed space. Just as the spaces to your right have to be encapsulated, just as this space that's underneath here has to be encapsulated. I stepped on something, I don't even know what it was. Oh, there's a string. Watch out, to get a line. Yeah, I got a bunch of lines. This is the space that concerns me the most. When we did the original design, one, two, three, the building actually ended right where you see that little wood structure. And this section was more forward. But as we kept doing the math, it didn't seem to work out. This will be our primary bulking pylone area for wrapper. If the math is correct, there should be enough space in here to do about 100 5,000 pound bolts. Is about what it should have the capacity to do. But again, we're going to be in a real space crunch. It's going to be really problematic. Now, here you want the lower ceiling because you want to encapsulate that air. Because this will be the ammonia room, essentially. Now, the stick construction that you see, this is temporary because they've just poured the concrete floor upstairs. So they want to make sure that as the concrete is curing, that it doesn't in any way end up causing any sort of stresses that move anything. So this is just temporary to make sure everything stays in position and doesn't slightly tweak. All this will be dropped out of here uh, once the concrete upstairs is fully cured. Now, it's cured enough for us to walk on, but the problem is those are the stairs you have to go up. Now, I can do them. I did them yesterday, but I'm not really too keen on you guys going up because you break a leg and I'm fucked. So, so you're just going to kind of have to imagine what it looks like from up there. Unless, John, you want to go up there and take one photo. That's what I was going to do. We, we, can, always, we can always yeah. take the crooked ladder. Yeah, let's take the crooked ladder. It's not as scary as it looks. No. No, I went up over there. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to lay, lay back. You know, breaking the leg is one thing, but losing a fall, I think, is a bigger concern. It's just going to fall through. So this is our big rectangle, guys. I like the type of stuff with the I mean, as you can see, we've integrated natural skylights. And it's actually quite amazing how much natural light you can do. Obviously, it's going to decrease once all the walls are closed in. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately the idea is to not have to use the lighting as much. And today's a cloudy day, so and these are diffuser skylights, so they should help to not make the light have hot spots. It's the same reason why they're zoned the way they are, and also to help prevent from uh, water penetration. Yeah. Jump for the strength. We were uh, thinking about it. We were on the picture behind this. Did y'all ever think about hey, the expandability of the like well, the light? Yeah, what would end up happening is the piece of land that's side by side here will be for the next building. And we would be able to build another building. We'll probably, we'll probably have it. We probably have more space for sorting than we need. Where we don't have enough space for colognes, and we won't have enough space for tobacco. But that's if the company keeps growing at the same rate. You know, eventually, I mean, I mean it's so exponential and it's so costly, the tobacco purchases and then the building investment. Because, I mean, ultimately, this building only has one purpose. 
I mean, what would you do with this building if you didn't have $20 million of tobacco? Just, who's going to buy it? Who's going to use it? What are they going to do with it? And it's not like it's in a place that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I got. Ice hockey. There you go. So, you got it? You want to try to get a photo of everybody?